Hi everybody, we're going to go through a R script that will simulate uh, some data. What's unusual a little bit about this simulation script is that we'll simulate at uh, three levels. Our basic unit of observation will be a child, but each child will be in a household and there'll be two children per, uh, or, or we'll see in the script, on average, two children per household. Then we'll have households in villages. And uh, so our village would be our treatment variable. So villages are treated, then households, uh, because the village is treated, households get treated. And then because a household gets treated, the child gets treated. We'll have an intermediate outcome. So we'll imagine a program that, for example, uh, delivers some kind of health information the intermediate variable is whether the uh, the educator visited the household uh, but of course the ultimate outcome is child health whether the child's health improved so that would be an example of an intermediate variable did the household receive an education visit and our final outcome variable did the child's health improve you could have a lot of household visits and the program would be very successful in that sense that we had this program to have educators go and visit households and they visited lots of households but if child health doesn't improve then of course the, we would think the program wasn't very successful so that's the idea of this simulation script let's uh, go and take a look at it and uh, as usual we start by clearing the working space and then we load our library packages and our uh, our packages. Our main package of interest here is the FO package, F-A-U-X, uh, and that creates the simulated data set. And then we have other our usual packages, and we have our correct standard error function for our regression analysis. So we go ahead and do that. Now we're going to simulate uh, 200 villages. So we create the number of villages here as 200, uh, and we're going to create some variables. Uh, we're going to start by using the rnorm multi, which is part of the fo, F-A-U-X, package, and uh, we'll create four variables. We see the variable names here. We're just going to call them generic names, vilvar1, vilvar2. This is the mean uh, of each one of the four variables. This is the standard deviation of each one of the four variables. And then we have four variables, so you have six correlation coefficients, as we explain up here. The correlation between one and two, between one and three, between one and four, between two and three, between two and four, and between three and four. So we have those six correlation coefficients. We see a couple that are negative and the rest are positive. Uh, so that'll create our uh, data set. And then we'll go down here and we'll adapt the data frame. We'll mutate by creating three new variables, a village dummy variable that will just take on zero, one for some of the villages. A treatment variable indicating whether the village is treated or not again dummy variable with probability 0.5 so half of the villages will be treated uh, and then a village id will just take the row number so one through 200 will be the um, village id variable so we run this and there's our 200 observations and we have our village id that's just this row number it turns now we've turned it into a variable uh, goes one through um, 200. so those are our villages now, in each village, we're going to have full, uh, uh, 20 uh, households in each village, but we're going to sample with replacement. So on average, it's going to be different. Sometimes it'll be 18, sometimes it'll be 22. Um, so we're going to have 4,000 households. We're going to create two variables for these households, household variable one, household variable two. And then we're going to add three variables of village ID. Uh, so the village ID is what village does this belong to? So we're going to sample from one to 200. So we're going to assign these households into villages, into the 200 villages. We're going to create a dummy variable for whether the household is female headed. And then we'll create a household ID that'll just be one through 4,000 uh, numbering the, the households. So each household will have two identifiers, what village it's in and what the household number is. Uh, so we go ahead and create this. And now we have 4,000 observations for these households, right? Uh, the household ID, female head, the, the village ID uh, that they're in, uh, and then the two household variables. So we've got 4,000 households. Now we're gonna create 8,000 children. On average, two children per household. We'll uh, <coughs> um, uh, just have two variables again for the children, child variable one, child variable two, that might be their age, it might be their height. 
these are the means of the two variables, these are the standard deviations of the two variables, and since it's just two va variables, there's just one correlation coefficient. Uh, we'll create uh, a household ID for the child, that is, we'll assign the household IDs for every child. Uh, the household IDs go from one to 4,000, so uh, every child will be assigned one of those uh, numbers. But we might have three children because we're, we're going to do replacement equals true, so some households might have three, some households might have four, some households might have one, some households might not end up having any, any children. Uh, we'll have a dummy variable for whether the child is female, uh, and as before, we'll have a child ID um, that will be just number one through 8,000. So those are our child variables. Now we need to merge them. First, we merge the children to the, to the household. Since every child is identified by a household ID um, and the households are identified by their IDs, we can uh, first join the children to their households. So now we have 8,000 observations of nine variables. Then we take that same data frame that we just created. When we merge, we can only join two at a time hard to merge three at a time. So we merge two at a time, and then we merge the next one to the first one. Uh, so now we merge in the village data, uh, and our identifier is the village ID. So we run that, and now we have 8,000 observations with 15 variables. We can take a look at this, and we notice we have our village dummy, village var one through four. All our data is here. We have 8,000 observations, one for every child. If we sort here on household ID, we see that household one has three children, household two has two children, household three, three children, two children, household five only has one child, household six, one child, household seven, one child, eight, two, household nine, two children. If we sort on the village uh, ID, we have village one has uh, this many, right? All the, we don't have, we can't count how many right here. But we can see this is village one has this many, village two has this many, village three has this many, right? We just go down and we can quickly see how many observations per uh, village. So that's our data frame. Now, just in case there are some missing households that, that don't have any children, we're going to uh, filter to drop all the missing households that don't end up not having any uh, children. Then we'll uh, just take a look at how many uh, people we have per village. We see it's around 30 uh 30 40 people per children per village um now we're going to create an intermediate variable that's going to depend on a variety of village and child characteristics and whether they're treated so we run that and then we'll create an outcome variable that depends on the intermediate variable and interaction term whether the child is female or not so we'll assume like if it was education, the educator comes to the village, uh, the children are listening to the educator, the educator has a larger effect on female children. So the effect on the boy children is three, the effect on the female children is three plus 1.5, 4.5. So a bigger effect uh, on, the, um, on the child of, the, of this, whatever this intermediate variable is. Notice that the treatment variable affects the intermediate variable by increasing it by two. So if you, you know, wanted to substitute that in there, the, on average, the effect on the outcome of the treatment should be six for the boys and two times 1.5 is um, three, uh, nine for the girls. That should be roughly the uh, effect. So we'll create the outcome variable, and, uh, and now we can go ahead and uh, look at the difference in outcome by treatment, and we see it is about uh, six. We can uh, do a histogram of the outcome. Uh, we see it varies, the outcome varies between 120 and 200, whatever, we don't know what the outcome is, right? This is called some index of something. Um, that's your job to assign some labels to it. Uh, we'll look at a scatter plot of the, um, outcome in the treatment uh, according to whatever child variable one is. There doesn't seem to be any strong relationship here with child variable one. Uh, had some, some small effect on the intermediate variable indeed. Um, so maybe there's a mild positive uh, slope there if you, we put the best fit line in. Uh, we'll do it by um, the same scatter plot, but by, by female. Now we see girls. Uh, category one have a much better outcome than uh, boys do, uh, as and that's because we we deliberately set it up so that females would have a larger effect from the from the treatment. 
Um, and, uh, and do they have uh, female doesn't enter into the intermediate? Yeah, so it's only, it's only because of the treatment effect that girls are shifted uh, up there. And, uh, and we can run uh, some regressions where we include some interacted um, terms. So we get, uh, we go from an R square when we just include the treatment, we, our R square is 0.03. When we include the covariates, our R square is uh, 0.81. So the covariates explain a lot of the variation in the, in the outcome. And notice that our treatment effect is about uh, six. And then uh, if you're female, we add uh, about two to that treatment effect. So about uh, eight, sort of similar to the calculation we did earlier based on our simulated data. Uh, so that's good. I uh, hope you find this uh, useful and uh, I hope you uh, enjoy turning this simulation into a uh, report.